So my name is Julien Coupé. I work at Verso, a company that does optimization software. And among other topics, we work on solving very cool routing problems uh, with Room. Uh, I'll give a bit of context on what kind of problems we're trying to solve. Um, then try to explain the outline of the solving approach and get to how you could use the project if you're interested. Uh, so this is a talk about OpenStreetMap data usage for, for transportation uh, beyond routing. Um, vehicle routing problems come in all sorts of, of flavors. The most simple one, the probably best known one, is a TSP, traveling salesman problem, where you need to visit a list of places with only one route. Then if you have other constraints like capacity restrictions or time, timing constraints and so on, you have many different variants of, of the same problem. Uh, it's actually very simple to, to state the problem. It's just, um, okay, we need a cheap set of routes across a set of points um, that match the, the constraints, but it's actually known to be very hard to solve. There are hundreds and thousands of articles on, on those subjects. And one of the ma main points is that whatever the approach you choose to solve those problems, there's always a point where the computing time goes completely wild if the problem size increases. Uh, we, we don't aim at writing a new paper um, with a new approach um, for an academic uh, purpose. We really want to have a production-ready solver. So this, um, we have a few requirements like real-life routing. This might sound obvious, but usually papers don't actually uh, treat the routing uh, side. They focus on the optimization, and they take the, the input, the tra travel times input, as granted. Um, like I said, we, getting optimal solution is usually out of reach, so we don't really care about getting optimal solutions. We want solutions that are good enough. And uh, one very important thing is we want to maintain the computing times very low uh, for several reasons, because it makes the solver easier to use, of course, but also because it enables to, to scale to solve huge problems. Um, everything starts from the data, of course, and then it's well known that we have several efficient routing engines to work on OpenStreetMap data. One of them is OSRM, so we rely on OSRM to for all routing um, matters. Uh, if you're familiar with that, you know you can configure routing with profiles. And what, what we actually do is we add another optimization layer on top of that. And as input, we take the, the cost, the matrix cost that are computed from, by OSRM. Uh, let's look at examples. Um, there have been many examples involving uh, drinking pints in old pubs in a country or city, but I don't feel it. we should advertise beer drinking on a Sunday morning, so I've set up an example with all restaurants that are tagged with cuisine pizza in OpenStreetMap in Milan. So let's say we want to visit them all. Maybe it's a silly um, task, but uh, from a mapping perspective, it could be a way to check different objects on, on the ground, for example. Um, if we solve a problem, um, we just solve a traveling salesman problem, so one route across all points. Um, that was 228 places, and the computing time is around 300 milliseconds. Uh, if you look at the details, I don't know if you can see that, the uh, loading part is actually uh, getting the problem, passing the problem, and most of it is computing the, the cost matrix. So that's OSRM work. Then the solving part is actually faster on that example, and the routing part is only about getting the detailed geometry for display. But maybe we want to um, have several routes to perform the same tasks, so maybe we want to add a vehicle to do that. So if we now have two vehicles starting, um, what the front end will do here is assign some capacity restrictions to make sure two routes are generated. So we can get, um, you now we have two different routes, two round trips to, to perform the same, the same tasks. Uh, what we can do is decide on other starting points because 
Uh, let's say we have someone that lives here, wants to start here. And maybe his favorite pizza place is uh, Dal Pugliese, and he wants to, to end up there to get his favorite pizza. If we solve the problem now, um, we get a round trip of vehicle one, and vehicle two starts here and ends here. So we have a, a great flexibility in the way we can define the fleet. We can model like single depot situations, multiple depot or a distributed fleet with different start and end. What you can um, even do is only provide the start or the end. For example, if, if we, let's say we're on the last day, we don't want to get back to state of the um, location. And let's say we want to start here. And if we do that, the optimization uh, phase will decide on the last visited job and the last place. So we design open trips. Uh, so, now to give a, a bit of background on the project, it actually all started um, as a proof of concept that one could solve TSP very efficiently with uh, real life uh, data based on OpenStreetMap and full OSRM integration. Um, we had several releases since. Uh, version 1 was about designing a stable API, some work on multi threading. Uh, we can also support the use of uh, OSRM as a library. It enables to, to uh, compute the, the matrices faster uh, because we use the OSRM from C++ directly. And then the latest release, uh, just about one month ago, is about handling uh, multiple vehicles. We can define skills uh, assigned to jobs, and then they need to be served by matching uh, vehicles or drivers. Uh, we can define multidimensional capacities. It means that you can uh, impose restrictions on several metrics. Maybe you have weight restrictions, volume restrictions, restrictions on number of items and jobs and so on. And you, so you can decide what you, what, you, what you have, your own metrics. And there's been some work on uh, the ability to define us um, user matrices that you might want to compute from another source. Um, now, how do we get the solutions? Uh, like I said, we started with the TSP. So we have a dedicated heuristic to solve the TSP. Um, the heuristic is just a simple process to get the initial solution. It's a way to get started. Uh, and to handle multiple vehicles with capacity restrictions, we have a dedicated clustering heuristic. The problem here is that usual clustering algorithms won't work because um, first, they won't handle different starting and ending points for vehicles. And also because they won't uh, let you monitor the, the size of the cluster. So. You, you can't impose capacity restrictions with the usual clustering algorithms. So what we actually do is we build the clusters um, by increasing those, those spanning trees in a concurrent way in order to try and minimize the overall cost. And then once we're done, th this enables to monitor the capacity restrictions. And once we're done, we solve a TSP for, for each cluster, simply. Of course, you can see it's biased. It's just a heuristic process. For example, that, that route is very weird because this, those jobs were inputted um, at the end of the process. It, it, they should not belong to a vehicle starting here, for, for example. So what we do once we have that initial heuristic solution is we actually try to improve it. We have a local search phase where we try to get from something like this to something like that, where you can see those jobs have been assigned to routes that start at other places. Um, we've been able to fix a strange mess here, which looks much better. Um, this strange route spanning across several places here is split into different routes, and it makes much more sense. So just to explain that a bit, how do we do that? Is We apply several um, operations. Uh, for example, just simple operations like you might want to change a job from one route to another. You might want to exchange two jobs from two different routes. Uh, you can do that with a set of, of two consecutive jobs, uh, changing or exchanging. And we also have uh, more complex operators that will switch the, the, the end of one route 
with the end of another root, they will exchange a whole part of a, of a root. So this is a more deeper change, so it's a bit more tricky to, 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 to use with um, the, valid, the capacity constraints. And we have the same, if uh, roots go in the opposite direction, we can replace the start of that root, um, and it becomes the end of the other root, and we reverse everything. Um, how do we apply those? We have a basic local search step where we actually look at all pair of roots. We evaluate the, the options of moving things like that. Um, are they valid moves? Do they improve the, the results? Now, this is the most expensive part. Then we perform the best move, the best option we have. And then the good news is we don't need to recompute everything the next time because you because we just changed two roots, so we only need to update what's related to those two roots. And we go back like that and apply operations um, until there's no improvement left. Sometimes this is not um, enough, and you might want to, to get out of a local minimum uh, where you would need to move jobs from more roots, like three, four, five roots. This is too expensive to check exhaustively, so what we do instead is we spot the worst jobs, we remove them from the solution to kind of loosen the constraints, and then um, we put them back in a hopefully better way and go, go over on the, on the local search uh, step. The good thing about this is it allows to have different level of, of exploration. Uh, and we expose that in the API uh, from zero to five. Zero means I want the fastest solution possible. And each time you increase that, that level, it means, okay, I'm prepared to compute for a longer time uh, in order to get a better solution. Maybe. How do we uh, look at our results? How can we assert that we have good results? Uh, the only way to do that is to work on benchmarks. Um, TSP is a reference benchmark of the TSP. So no map here, sorry. Uh, it's just played a trillion distance but it's actually the only way to, to check because those problems have been evenly studied, so all optimal solutions are known. Um, instances are quite good, um, quite big, I mean, up to nearly 20,000 points. A word on the results, it doesn't, because the size are really different, it doesn't make sense to look at the average computing time, but the median computing time is 28 milliseconds, which means that of the instances are solved in less than 28 milliseconds, which is very fast. Um, the gap to optimal solution, uh, this just means that if the optimal solution costs 100, whatever the unit, then we provide solutions that cost 103 on average. So um, the thing is, we say that's good enough, and we don't want to, to look further because it's fast. And I've provided a few, a few results to give a, a sense of scale for the computing times. If you look at small problems in the hundreds, it's just a matter of milliseconds. Then if you reach 2,000, two it's just one, a bit more than one second, and it starts to grow more. But for the biggest problem, nearly 20,000 points, we are only um, half an hour or so. Uh, to be... Uh, complete with benchmarks, uh, there are benchmarks for the uh, CVRP so with capacity restrictions. Uh, what's difficult in those benchmarks is that the, um, the amounts, if, if you think of capacity restrictions in terms of weight, um, the radius here represent the amount for a job. So it might make sense that this job would be in a, a route that pass close but it's not possible because of the restrictions. So that's what makes the problem difficult here. And in those benchmarks, um, there's uh, a, a huge tightness, which means if you want to solve the, the, the instances and handle whole jobs, then you need to have nearly always full vehicles, which is hard to achieve because of the packing problem here. Uh, a word on the results. So I'm reporting results for the in the first column for the fastest exploration level and, and the best one. Um, you can see that computing times stay quite low. 
we are not able to always assign all jobs, but we are nearly, we are really close, more than 99% of jobs assigned. As a result, um, not all instances have all jobs solved. So we do provide a solution, but we just also say, okay, we have a list of a few jobs that could not be assigned. And for all uh, instances where we, we could assign all jobs, then it makes sense to compare the, the cost we have with the best known solutions in, in, uh, in the literature. And uh, you can see that we reach good uh, gaps to best known solutions that can be even lowered if you, if you compute for a, a bit longer. So now about maybe the most interesting part, if you want to use the project, how could, can you get started? First, you need an OSRM server uh, running on top of OpenStreetMap data. It could be your own or remote service or whatever. You need to clone the, the backend uh, solver from the Vroom project uh, namespace on GitHub, uh, compile it. Then you can use Vroom as a, as a common line. Um, if this is not really convenient, you might want to use that on a server and make remote calls. There's a small wrapper for that. Vroom Express is just uh, an Express GS server that will receive post requests containing the, the problem um, as post data, handle the solving, and give back the answer in the, in the response. And if you even want a simpler way to do that, you can use the front end, which is what I, what I showed in the demo uh, earlier. So all this is open source. Of course, you can run that on your own instance. The demo I've uh, been showing, everything was running on my, on my laptop. Um, good news is if you don't even want to set that on your machine, uh, we have a demo server you can um, fire your requests to. And there's also a demo front end, so you can just try with a few mouse clicks. Um, a quick look at how would a command line look. So not very surprising. Uh, you can use standard or input or output or provide files. Uh, you can provide a number of threads for parallelization. This the exploration level. You can set up the uh, address and port of the OSRM server. So if you don't have an OSRM server, if you run that, you will hit the OSRM demo server. Um, using a post request with curl, uh, the interesting part is you can send your request to our demo uh, server, solver.roomproject.org. So you can actually get started just by formatting your own problem in JSON, following the API, and, and, and try it. Uh, as a conclusion, um, why would you use Vroom if you have this kind of problem to solve? Um, of course, it's based on OpenStreetMap, makes use of the OpenStreetMap ecos ecosystem tools like OSRM. It's basically licensed, so you can do pretty much whatever you want. Um, I hope I have convinced you that it's efficient, and efficient means both you will get good solutions, and also you get solutions fast. And this is a very important um, thing in the, in the way we design the approach, because it allows to, to scale and solve big instances. And this will probably be the first question, if I don't mention it, uh, we do have plans to include timing constraints for the next release. So I'm leaving you with a few links. If you want to check out the, the demo, head up to map.vroomproject.org. Uh, the wiki has all required information for building, using, and you can follow Project News on Twitter. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. No questions? Thanks. What are the uh, advantages of using Vroom over something like OptiPlanner? Because there's a lot of data on why this is good, but if I have to choose a, uh, a vehicle routing solution, why is this, or what is different about this than like over, example, over OptiPlanner? OptiPlanner. Well, OptiPlanner is um, an all-purpose solving engine. It includes the same kind of local search uh, procedure, but it's really uh, a generic tool. It can be used to solve vehicle problems, but also scheduling problems. And um, it's, uh, it's, there's a more broad um, um, range of application. 
So as a result, it's more generic. On the contrary, like I said, we have a very dedicated approach to solve a TSP. If you want to solve a TSP, a TSP with Room, you'll go through the TSP code that makes use of the fact that the problem is actually simpler. So it will be, maybe it will be quite the same in terms of quality, but it will be, uh, I would expect it to be much faster. That's. Hi. Um, do you support different routing modes, like modes of transport? Car, so, do you support different modes of transport? Like car, HGV, pedestrian, cycling? Yeah. I mean, it's all OSRM based, right? But you are the API that talks to OSRM back then. Yeah. So can you actually include modes of transport or is it all car? Do you mean on the, on the solving side or? <clears throat> on the metric side. So if you compute the matrices with OSRM, you can yeah, give the, it mode of transport, right? The, the, the fast answer to this is yes, we do, because it's, it's all a routing matter. So you can, you can do whatever you want at that level, and it will just impact the cost we get. And we work with the cost you have from, from your routing profiles. So if you just switch profile, we work with whatever you choose to work for routing. Right, but um, whom is the API that talks to the OSRM backend, yep. right? So as a user, I would not really see the OSRM backend. So I would not be able to talk to it, uh, right? Yeah. Well, so I would have to uh, specify a mode of transport within your API. You'll have to do that here, actually. Well, we, we do support, there's a flag, um, we do have a flag for mode of transportation from the command line, and this will change the, the request you do to OSRM. But then you'll have to, to have your own um, uh, load balancer here to, to, to hit different OSRM servers. You can do that, of course, but you'll have work to, to set up different modes of transport here. Right, so there's um, also native support in whom to specify different modes well, of transport. To, to be Precise. There's a command line flag that will change the the way the OSRM request is written. There's a profile parameter. Um, the bad news is it's not actually in use in the OSRM API. So you would have to set up your own uh, proxy server with the NG Inix or whatever ah. to to direct the request. Okay. But Thanks. this is rather an, an OSRM related question. Ah, that is yeah. it. <laughs> Thanks. Currently, you've got uh, one matrix which you used for the entire problem, so kind of two-dimensional matrix. Uh, when you're doing vehicle routing across a whole day, especially in quite a busy urban area, the traffic levels for different um, journeys in the matrix might change. So a road which is good to take at 6 a.m. because there's no traffic might be a really bad road to take at 3 p.m. when there's loads of traffic around. Um, have you had any thoughts about supporting effectively three-dimensional matrices where the, um, where the times between uh, columns and rows change during the day? Yeah, well, uh, the easy answer to this is it's actually a routing problem. So if you have uh, good routing here with uh, traffic information, of course you will improve the results of the optimization. Um, but actually, um, having several for now, we have only one matrix to describe the cost, so we can't take into account the changes of the cost during the day. Um, that would be um, maybe an this would be an option to have several matrices, but it would incur also um, performances uh, drawbacks because if you change a route, like in the local search phase, if you modify your route, like you add a job, you will be shifting everything after that job. So you will potentially be changing all costs. So you would need, it, it would require to go through the whole route, which is much more uh, complex in terms of algorithm complexity. So probably this, this would be much expensive, much more expensive in terms of computing time. Okay. We um, don't support that right now. Yep, yeah, no, I, I can understand that. Um, slight uh, slight follow-up question. Um, the pace of development on OSRM seems to have gone kind of quiet in the last couple of months. Um, do you have any thoughts on how that might impact Vroom? Um, are you planning to stay tightly coupled to OSRM, or uh, might it be worth looking at other routing providers as well? Uh, the good thing about... Uh, 
But this is, if you want, you can actually change that. If, if, if you want to use Vroom with any other routing engine, you just have to, to rewrite a small wrapper for the queries, and you could just change just that bit, and it will work all the same. So um, uh, on the other side, OSRM is quite efficient. This, that's the reason why Vroom uses OSRM. It's very efficient for matrix computing. And I mean, it works. Even if it's not actively maintained, or we'll see what future holds, but I mean, it does work. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello. Over here. <laughs> um, so you're calculating the matrix and then sending it to the optimization engine. But have you thought about uh, U-turn prevention at a location you're optimizing? So you're arriving, you don't want to make a U-turn. Let's say you have a big truck picking up stuff and delivering stuff. Yeah, there's actually, um, there's actually uh, an option for that in our SRM uh, request for the approaches. You can make sure that the approaches will be uh, on the right side of the road, or you can av avoid the U-turns uh, in the results you get from OSRM. So you, you can actually tweak that in the, to impact the, the, the cost metric. Yeah, but uh, what about, so those are from A to B, but what if you your optimization engine says we arrive at the location A and then go to location B? It, it has to be at the level of the optimization engine. Yeah, okay, right? I see what you mean. It depends on, on the order of, of the points. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, we actually don't have that, that level of priority, but we're planning things for, for a whole day. I'm, I'm not sure this is that important for, for the whole planning robustness. Yeah. But if you have experience with that, I'm happy to discuss it. <laughs> 